Hi, I'm Dr. Andrew Jones here today to talk about a very controversial topic, opening everything back up in a controlled manner, of course, but we'll get into that. If you remember back in March before the shutdown, an ID director said, and I quote, trying to stop COVID is like trying to stop the wind. Let's just wear masks, social distancing, hand wash to slow down the cases so that we don't overwhelm the hospital systems and allow the hospitals to like kind of like a trickle down effect because as the wind goes through the US, everyone's going to get COVID. So the thought process was let's not overwhelm the hospitals so they can just have these people get them better and be ready for the next group of people, get them better and get ready for the next group of people. That way they can focus on taking care, including myself, the people in the hospital and not try to take care of people in the hallways and here, there and so forth and a big panic. So that was what was in the beginning. But like a wildfire that's going through, you do more damage over time. One controversial option is to open everything back up in a controlled manner. For example, research has shown that convalescent plasma, which is the antibodies for people who were infected, who were really sick, who have the antibodies at a high enough level, give it to people who were in the hospital and they survive. So if we were to increase the supply of convalescent plasma, give it to the people who are at high risk, because it's gonna protect them for two to three months, the convalescent plasma, give it to them in a coordinated opening, then allow business to open back up, have the employees wear masks, they feel comfortable, open up the bars, the clubs, the malls, the people who are immunocompromised, they're not going there anyway. Um, people with cancer and so forth, they're not gonna to go to a club. It's too many people, it's too high risk of them to catch something. They know like, hey, I have a high risk of catching a respiratory virus even in the summertime. They're not gonna go there. So you increase the commonness in plasma, give it to them, make sure they're protected for two to three months while you have the inactive plan of slowly opening things in a more rapid progression, completely open. Let the virus run through, the people with the commonness of plasma are protected, the people who are young and healthy, who I've seen come to the ER, get discharged, they've already had uh, COVID-19. They're gonna be fine, kids are fine. I've had COVID, I was fine. I have the antibodies also. So if you have people like me, who've already been exposed, I'm protecting someone else, and so forth and so forth. Once we have everything coordinated, tell the people, hey, we have a future date, two, three weeks from now, or a month from now, we have this in place, this plan. If you have a weak immune system, be aware that this is going to happen, this is going to transpire, and this date, things are going to be open, just like you would in the winter time. Protect yourself and stay away, and let, let the virus run through. Otherwise, we're going to have a big mess this winter, because if only 15% of the population has only been exposed to COVID, that number is going to go really high this winter along with the other respiratory viruses and it's gonna be a lot of deaths unfortunately. Social distancing, wearing the face mask, wash your hands is great for a pandemic in the very beginning. All the literature says that, we've known that for decades, that's a fact. And actually a lot of countries actually have done that. They have no COVID case because they did that in the beginning. We're doing that months later. It's too late, the virus is already here. Like it's here, like it's too late to do all that. Yes, wearing the face mask and so forth will protect you, but there's other things that we need to do. I want people to think about this. Winter is around the corner. There's 200 respiratory viruses, including influenza, that overwhelm the hospital systems. Every doctor, every nurse, pulmonologist who works in the hospital knows during the winter time, we're gonna have patients, all the beds are at capacity. We're gonna have the hallways packed, some hospitals are going to go on diversion, which means your ambulance is going to, have to go to a different hospital. That's just in the winter time. Now add COVID on top of that. That's just going to be a big fire that's out of control. It's going to be mass panic, chaos, and more deaths. Not more so because we don't have the resources to help everyone and unless the virus is killing people. So that's what happened last winter and it's going to happen again. The first wave has not even ended and cases are slowly going up, but from the numbers we're trying to extrapolate, only around 10 to 15% of the 330 million people have actually gotten COVID. So that means 75 plus percent. By flu season, end of September, October, 
you will have at least 25% of the people already exposed to COVID, which means you have 75% not exposed. So during the winter time, that's the fuel that viruses need to just explode. You have dry conditions, you have increased respiratory secretions because of the cold weather, you're transmitting more to people, you're in closed quarters. Viruses love those conditions. So those 200 respiratory virus influenza are gonna run through really quick. Remember, one billion respiratory infections every year in the US. On top of that, with COVID, 75% of people possibly not infected is gonna be a big mess. So vaccines are being rushed. Vaccines take years to be made properly. You have phase one, phase two, phase three, then you get the vaccine mass produced and sent out. Phase one, a lot of medication, even cancer drugs show promise in the lab. Oh, we cured cancer in the lab. We cured this disease in the mice. We cured this, that's phase one. You're, you're testing it and so forth. And phase two, a small population of people. Phase three is the largest and the longest phase. You test a ton of people, hundreds and thousands of people you test them and then you get an idea of the adverse effects over time. Like does this virus over time cause some long, cause some long term disease? So that's that's the longest. So a vaccine by this winter is is not gonna happen. It's, it's, it's impossible to be done the right way. Everything is chaos, there's such a mass panic. There's so many unvalidated claims about with false testing, uh, antibody testing, who's getting it, who's not getting it. People are swabbing, taking these tests. They're not FDA certified. They're swabbing animals, plants, objects, and finding tests positive. There's people who are going to testing sites and with waiting for hours, and they leave early because they, they're tired of waiting, and they get a letter in the mail, you tested positive for the antibodies. I, I hear these things from people I know personally, and it's just, the numbers are falsely elevated. The CDC even wrote an article over a month ago that said, these numbers are falsely elevated. They said the mortality rate is not four or five percent. Mortality rate is actually 0.25 percent. And that is true and I agree with them based on how things are being run. Numbers are being adjusted to fit people's agenda. The mortality rate is not four or five percent. Herd immunity is when you have 70 percent of the people who are infected and exposed to a particular virus or pathogen. They build immunity and they protect the other 30%, the very old, the very young, the immunocompromised. You have kids with you know, immunocompromised disorders. You have leukemias, cerebral palsy, so forth, bed bound. You have adults, the same thing, teenagers, elderly with dialysis. You have so many people, so that 30% is protected by the 70%. So every winter, think about this, every winter, the elderly and people who are immunocompromised, they know I have to stay away from everyone because I'm a, if I get the flu, I could die. They know that. And some of them unfortunately do catch the flu and die. Last flu season, 105 kids died, unfortunately. Most of that had to do with the not getting the flu shot because the parents were worried about autism, but that was 105 kids. So basically, everyone knows during the winter and when spring comes, they know it's safe. Hey, I can go outside again. I can go play. I can go go for a walk in the park. I can do these things. But right now, everyone's confused. The people who are immunocompromised, I've seen them. They're wearing these masks, which only protects you, the air from this way up to 60%, but the air still flows to the side. I see them wearing this, thinking they're protected, and they're ending up in the hospital with COVID. Because of the way things have progressed so far with everyone doing whatever they want and not consulting the specialists, People are dying that should not have died. For example, there was a 17-year-old girl with a history of autoimmune disease, obesity, and childhood cancer. She went to a party with a hundred of her friends outside, you know, exposed, but they were in crowded conditions, going indoors and outdoors. She caught COVID and she died. If we don't do something, we can stick to the current plan, which is not working. We can stay indoors, until the winter time when cases go up, people are still gonna die, cases still gonna go up, people are gonna be frustrated, then the winter will pass until spring, and then we hope the cases go down. That is not the best plan of action right now. So cases still going up and people are dying. Viruses are mutating. Shutting everything down does slow down the spread, but people are still dying, although slower, they're still dying. 
So the thought process is, well, if I open everything back up, it's gonna kill everyone. That is not true. Because like, like every winter time, when the people who are protected, they stay away. They're protected. But everyone else, they get exposed, they get coughs, fevers, they get over, they're, they're immune. And they, they protect the 30%. That's herd immunity, how it works every winter. People are dying right now who shouldn't because they're confused. Okay, is it safe for me to go outside if I wear the face mask or not? Do I wear cloth, surgical, N95? They, they adjust it, they take it off, they drink water. It's just, it's just so many, they focus on the face mask, but they, they touch everything, they rub their eye, their nose. It's, 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 it's bad. I hope I'm wrong, but history has shown otherwise, and I don't want us to be at home like the people in 1918 with the Spanish flu who felt helpless watching the first wave, the second wave, the third wave go through killing people.